Hey, One Tree Hill fans, welcome back. Thanks for being here. I am, once again, from now on, I'm going to just start watching before the podcast so that I can take my notes on the podcast. I think I feel a little more in the loop that way. So this episode is season three, episode eight, the worst day since yesterday. I can relate. So let's get into it. Okay, I legit forget. Did he, did Brooke really sleep with Chris? Ironically foreshadowing the fact that Brooke wants Peyton to go talk to Lucas on her behalf. Oh my god, Nathan's saying, are you going to keep this evil crap up your whole life, Chris? Okay, and then he goes on to talk about how, you know, he shouldn't do this shit when other people's feelings are involved. This is so evolved, Nathan. Like, first season, Nathan wouldn't recognize this, Nathan. And I love it. And I love when he kind of, like, pushes him down over the chair. I like to think of that as hitting you, you know, without the hitting you. <laughs> Oh, Dan, don't you know by now that you can't get into a verbal sparring match with Karen? Karen, oh my God, you handled that radio call from Keith, the unemployed mechanic in Tree Hill, uh-huh, aka Dan, quite well. Oh my God, when she said the last part about raising a son to be a good man, unlike the boy who fathered him. Oh, right in the kisser there, Danny boy. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Deb, what are you, eight years old? This coming from the woman who cut the ass out of all my pants. Too bad the one in my life won't go away. Nice. <laughs> uh, I just have to wonder, does Dan really consider himself a good father? Or is his son really just a pawn for him? Like, I think that is the question that always goes back and forth in my mind. Like, I know on some level you love him, but I feel like you love him more because he's this strategic pawn against Deb. Oh, Dan, you walked right into that one. Anything else bugging you? Just you. Good one, Nathan. Ah, uh, now Brooke shows us all a good lesson. Read everything you sign. <laughs> Her clothes designs under the head of her the job that she was at and she gets nothing <sighs> corporate america i tell you and of course nice one peyton with lucas repainting the red door painting while angry that's original <laughs> oh lucas saying he won't make that mistake again with brooke if only you if only you'd stuck to that Ugh. I like Bevan's little moment of with Whitey giving him tips and he's like, Shh, oh wait, that's not a bad idea. Go you, Bevan. Oh, how cute was it that Haley decorated Nathan's locker? I know it was mandatory, but you know what? It was adorable. I'll take what I can get. Wow. So Rachel decorates Lucas' locker with all the the LG, LGBT like uh, colors and do it for the boys. And then here comes Peyton. Hey, it could be worse. It could say Dyke. True. Poor Brooke really fe going through the feels right now. Hey Peyton, when you need someone's help, especially one that you've been dogging for like weeks, months even, maybe don't come across as such a bitch. I love you girl, but pull it back. I just hate to see people hating on Haley. She lived her life for once and she's trying to make up for it. And you lady are no saint. Everybody makes mistakes and you did too. Move on, get over it. Did Dan say family values? <laughs> okay, who else wanted Deb to say anything other than the prepared statement that Dan had her read on the radio? That? was painful. I'm with you. I'm with you, Karen. I wanted to cry too. Seriously, how adorable is Karen with these freaking sayings? And then her not knowing what to get over someone else, you got to get under someone else. <laughs> not realizing what it meant after she told Lucas, oh no, I didn't scratch that. <laughs> Dan is such the good villain. He sits there and he threatens his son the one he doesn't like, into passing the ball to his favored son. Or he'll tell Whitey about Lucas's heart condition. 
Oh, we all knew that was going to come back and bite Lu Lucas in the ass with Dan knowing that bit of information. Oh, I forgot that Dan has freaking Chris come over and thus is the start of a very twisted situation. You know, this interaction between Lucas and Nathan before the game is really funny because it's like, you know, it's hostile, but it's getting increasingly less hostile, I feel like. <laughs> it's their way back to their, it's their way back to each other, right? The brotherly love. <laughs> Gigi's a little freak. I want to hide inside the lockers <laughs> of the players. And thank you, Peyton, for smacking the crap out of Chris. We were all wanting to do that. We lived vicariously through that slap. Going back to the locker room with Lucas and Nathan, I do appreciate that Nathan, uh, Lucas told Nathan to fix his marriage. I do, however, appreciate Rachel's snappy comeback to Chris being gross with her and Tim and his tramp stamp tattoo. Of course, what else would Tim get? And of course, Whitey changes Tim's number. So now the tattoo Tim got doesn't match. <laughs> oh, Whitey's speech about retiring and wanting to end it as champions. And of course, Nathan tells Lucas, hey, if you screw us, now you're screwing Whitey too. That was one of the better choreographed, like, cheerleader scenes in this episode I have to say because usually they just kind of do shots all around but this seemed to be they were pretty good on this one okay I love that Mouth was like so happy to introduce the players and then he's like and singing our national anthem Chris Keller <laughs> and of course Chris being true to who he is Thank you, Tree Hill. This goes out to all your girlfriends. You know who you are. And Lucas is like, I hate that guy. The feeling's mutual, Luke. Oh my god. Dan and Dub's altercation. Mini altercation before they go into the game. I swear, those two are like War of the Roses. Good movie. If you haven't watched it, I recommend. <laughs> and Lucas, being distracted so much by Chris Keller. Imagining him kissing Brooke. And then missing the shot. And of course, Nathan's like, hey, quit looking at him. We know he can score. Ha ha. Oh my god. Lucas telling Nathan he's over. Give me the ball. And steps out of the way. And hits Chris Keller. And knocks him down. Nice. Whoo. That locker room altercation was intense. I mean, freaking Dan is such a jackass with just his words. And then he's going to physically try to get into an altercation with Nathan. And thank god Whitey was there. I was like, although I was personally like, do it, Whitey. Do it. Use the baseball bat on Dan. Nobody would blame you. Oh, wow. Forgot about that. Here comes Brooke wanting to talk to Lucas. And here comes Rachel right behind Luke. And Luke's like, can I get a ride, Rachel? Doesn't even acknowledge Brooke. Oof. So Rachel kicks Lucas out of her car. Walk home and think about what you want in your life, essentially. <sighs> That's kind of reminiscent of the first season, too, when he had to walk back to town. <laughs> I love that Haley waited for Nathan, and I love that Nathan wanted him to walk, wanted her to walk home with him, or walk with him on his way to home. Not going home. Don't misunderstand. We're not there yet. I know it's not right, essentially. But I do love that Peyton and Brooke went and took all her clothes with her design on it. I know, like, technically it's not right, but it wasn't right what they did to her either. It's messed up, man. Oh, my God. Loving mouth right now with that video of Dan throwing Nathan up against the locker. Not very mayoral, is it? Ah! <laughs> mouth to the rescue. Not really sure what you were going for there, Lucas. Throwing your heart pills away is not exactly a smart move. I mean, okay, you have to fight through weakness? This is a little different. Okay, that's my thoughts on the show. Now to the podcast. Okay, so I just got done listening to the podcast, and welcome back, Sophia. I also agree that her groupie comments after sleeping with Chris was funny, though. <laughs> Um, I am happy also, as always, for any progress between uh, 
Haley and Peyton because it really always bugged me when Haley and Peyton were not, you know, good with each other. It just always felt so weird to me. I always appreciate the life lesson. Arguing is not a fight. You know, it's part of life. Sometimes you have to argue to get to the point. It is true. And, uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate the evolved languages lessons, ladies, because communication is totally key. I am also very glad that we all can agree that we love Whitey. And, you know, I also agree that, you know, Dan really does think that he owns everything, but that's kind of really in line with his narcissistic uh, character. And, you know, I too really immediately had that thought about Karen not using that video that Mouth has. Um, I really just want her to kind of stop taking the high road because it's annoying. I mean, and honestly, it kind of needs to come out, you know? I mean, people obviously aren't always all aware of how he is, and I definitely agree that Deb needs to take that video to the court because that would be her way out. But I don't think that happens. I can't remember what happens, but I don't think that happens. <laughs> Yes, I do have to admit, Rachel did have a couple of good moments um, in this episode, as much as it, I begrudgingly give that to her. <laughs> um, I have never really thought the whole Dan, uh, Chris Keller is Dan's long lost son theory. I could see why people think that, but it's, I think, too much of a soap opera storyline. I do love how they came up with the podcast name. That was cute. And, you know, speaking of the podcast, I have to I wonder, does anybody else notice how they bleep certain words or some words and not others? Or I've noticed they're bleeping less words. Like, I don't know why they do that. <laughs> and I agree. I agree with Sophia. I want to be water, too. That's an excellent way of putting it. And my final note, I totally agree with Joy on her character, Haley. She should have said all of the things to Nathan when he came to visit her on her tour. And that's my thoughts for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.